Hello, and welcome to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners of Futurum Research, and on behalf of my team here at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're thrilled to have you. In this keynote conversation, More Insights' Patrick Moorhead sits down with AMD's President and CEO, Lisa Su. And their conversation today is all about high performance computing and the role that HPC plays in our lives. From the data center to the edge, this technology is essential. And I can't wait to hear what Lisa has to share about AMD's vision for the future. Let's go check it out. Lisa, thank you so much for coming to the 6.5 Summit for the second year in a row. You're doing the big uh, keynote for semiconductors and devices. Thank you so much. It's great to be here, Pat. Thanks for having me this year. Absolutely. It's been a very busy year uh, for AMD. So maybe the best place to start is maybe catch us up on some of the highlights and what you've been up to for, for the last year. Yeah, so uh, Pat, it has been an incredibly busy year, I think, for all of us. And uh, you know, we're always focused on bringing our new technologies to market, and you know, really focused on high-performance computing as you know our cornerstone. Um, and it's been a busy year. You know, lots of new products. Um, you know, we launched new products um, with our uh, Zen three architectures and um, our RDNA two architecture, um, and um, you know, across all of our markets. So you know, PCs, gaming, data center. Um, so yeah, it's been an incredibly busy time. Yeah, it, there doesn't go a week where I don't see some big home run announcement or something going on with AMD. It's exciting, exciting place uh, to be. And it's fun to say, I used to work there, so. <laughs> right here, you mean. <laughs> exactly, right here. Uh, so the theme of this year's summit is, is the Roaring Twenties. And uh, we're not out of COVID yet, but boy, we are slowly inching. We see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, can you look into your crystal ball and, and talk about how are you looking for the opportunities of, some people call it the new, new normal, uh, what comes next, but we certainly are uh, in, in a new period. I've seen roadmaps, uh, particularly on SaaS properties and collaboration, uh, get pulled in years. And I know that that has to have an impact. There's a huge growth in the cloud, but what are you seeing uh, for this next new normal? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're, you're right. There's been just so much um, acceleration of the pace of, um, of innovation. And again, the way you know, I look at it, I, actually I would call it hopefully the better normal, <laughs> not even the, the new normal, but the, the better normal is you know, we've, um, we've now lived in a world where everybody realizes how important um, semiconductors and, oh, yeah. and compute are. Um, to everything that we do, right? Whether you're a business or, you know, um, you know you're a, a, a person or you're, you know, all of these applications um, need more chips, need more um, computing. And, and so what we really see is, you know, this vicious positive cycle, right? So the, the, the cycle is we've now, um, you know, adopted compute every aspect of our lives. And, um, and that's true also in terms of digital transformation in businesses. Um, we've worked out some kinks this year, frankly, it hasn't been the, you know, uh, the uh, technology hasn't been perfect, but now it's better and it's more capable and we're going to make it um, even accelerate the use of uh, technology going forward. So yeah, I, I think it's a incredible time to, to be in the business. Yeah, it is uh, uh, funny, even 10 years ago, when people are saying software is eating the world, I would say, well, software has to run on something. Uh, and it is incredible uh, when you align semiconductors, uh, software uh, in the cloud. And, and I'd like to double click in on the data center and uh, under, you're in the middle uh, of all of that. And, and I'm wondering, what are you seeing some of the major trends in the next three to five years in the data center and how uh, is AMD prepared to take advantage of that? Well, uh, look, the data center is um, extremely strategic to us, and it's uh, I think strategic to everyone. And you know, we look at the data center as um, you know sort of an evolving environment that is increasingly more and more heterogeneous. So you know, the idea that uh, you know one size doesn't fit all, you know, frankly, with as much um, data that is out there and as much as you want to do with it, you actually need to optimize for various workloads. And so you need CPUs and GPUs and um, ASICs and FPGAs and, 
you know, from an AMD standpoint, you know, our job is to um, really provide the foundational technology, but then also the ability to mix and match um, the IP as you need in the data center and, and work very closely with our customers to bring that innovation to the market. Yeah, and the other thing uh, that I'm seeing too is um, it's not just in a huge building. I mean, it's on the edge, uh, it's in the mid edge, and we get into these debates on, on what is the edge? What is the data center edge? But I think that's all goodness because uh, you have to build this out to be able to take advantage of all that data that's being created uh, uh, on the edge. So um, we're seeing a lot out there, well actually not a lot, but a few people uh, designing their own chips, uh, leveraging uh, ARM uh, ecosystem out there. Uh, what are your thoughts on, on maybe how that plays out? Uh, what does that mean and how does that relate to uh, AMD? Well, you know, I think, um, again, I think in the data center, it's all about uh, workload optimization. So um, when you think about uh, what the big cloud providers are doing or large enterprises, it's trying to, they're really trying to optimize their compute for the data that they're processing or the workload that they're trying to, uh, uh, to handle. And so, you know, I think there's a place for ARM in the data center, uh, but it's more of a com conversation of what are you trying to do? Like, what is it, you know, what workload are you trying to handle? Um, you know, x86 um, it really handles the highest performance general purpose workloads. Um, there's a lot of, you know, accelerated computing growth. So, you know, you have GPUs and other accelerators. Um, and then there are, you know, some ARM-based, um, you know, uh, compute instances as well. And, you know, our goal is actually to um, pick the best compute for, uh, for each workload. So that, that's really the way we think about it. Yeah, heterogeneity is 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 important, and uh, one of the things that I always try to explain to people is, hey, don't don't confuse instruction set with uh, uh, performance or or even wattage. I mean, it really comes down to who's developing it, uh, you know, how much you're willing to invest in it, and I, and I think we see that that playing out uh, every day. Speaking of heterogeneity, uh, AMD announced uh, its intention to acquire Xilinx, and Xilinx brings a lot of really interesting IP and products to the table. What does it mean for the data center? What, what do people need to think about uh, when it comes to Xilinx and AMD and the data center? Well, we are um, really excited about the acquisition of Xilinx. Um, and, you know, I think it's a um, phenomenal team um, that uh, we're going to bring um, as a part of AMD. And it's really the idea of you know, let us have the broadest portfolio of sort of um, high performance computing elements and, and we want to put them together in the most efficient way. So you know, Xilinx brings um, just leadership in adaptive computing, um, you know, their FPGA leadership. Um, you know, our goal is to make sure that we can integrate that with our CPUs and GPUs and sy system solutions for people. And when you look at the data center, um, that's exactly what people want, right? They want to be able to choose these different types of compute. And, um, you know, I'm also excited about some of the um, other markets that Xilinx um, you know, have uh, capabilities in, you know, it's like 5G and communications and automotive and industrial. So those are all areas that we think uh, we can, you know, take our high performance computing technology and really extend it um, into a broader set of customers. Yeah, I am uh, many times having to explain the Xilinx business on what they do, and they might be known for FPGAs, but their heterogeneous designs they have, I think, are really super uh, exciting. I can't wait to see uh, when the deal goes through how uh, AMD integrates uh, all of that together. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, we'll have the full spectrum of, you know, general purpose, you know, CPUs straight to, you know, GPUs, ASICs, FPGAs, really in, in, a, um, in a total system solution that we can provide and work with customers on. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited as well. Yeah, and even not to mention some ASICs that are uh, slid in there in those designs as well. So the full, the full uh, bailiwick. So uh, let's talk about uh, a little about what's going on uh, in the semiconductor industry. Um, people are waking up and saying, hey, semiconductor is really important. Uh, I can't buy my car or I can't get my Chromebook uh, for, for my kid or my, or, or my PC, uh, or even uh, you know, a PS5 or something like that, and, and, and it really put a spotlight on, on two things. I think the first of all is supply, okay? And also there's been a lot of talk uh, about where chips should be built, where they shouldn't be built. Um, what, what, are, what are your viewpoints on those? Well, look, I think, um, 
there's no question that semiconductors have, um, you know, really become so much more pervasive. Uh, they're in, you know, everything. I mean, basically everything. And, um, you know, what the pandemic has unveiled is really sort of the demand for semiconductors um, far exceeded what any of us as an industry predicted. And so, you know, we do have this sort of imbalance between um, demand and supply. Um, that being said, I mean, you know, you know, um, our colleagues in the business are working extraordinarily hard uh, to get more capacity online, and that's significant capital investments, um, that's um, doing all kinds of engineering work to, you know, qualify and bring more um, supply to bear. So, you know, we will work through this like we have worked through other um, other times, but n no question, um, there's there's significantly high demand, and um, it's 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 put a spotlight on the industry. You know, I think um, on your broader question of you know what does it say about the industry? I think as semiconductors have now become so essential, it's the right conversation, right? You you want to have. Um, you know, geographic diversity, you want to be able to ensure that you have assurance of supply. And, and so, you know, I think uh, it's, a, um, it's a great thing that we're talking about, you know, how do we as an industry and as a country invest more from a, a research and development standpoint, as well as an onshore manufacturing standpoint. I love it, if nothing else, that it reinforces something that I've been seeing for over 30 years, is that semiconductors are strategic. And, and whether you're a business, whether you're an OEM or an ODM, you can use semiconductors to get a strategic competitive advantage. And that's why I'm, I'm, I even like to see uh, people doing their own designs and it, because more competition, and, and I know AMD knows this, more competition is, is better. Uh, uh, completely you know, like, agree. When it comes to designs or even when it comes to manufacturing, uh, more is better and I think it will rise. And I can't wait to see what the next five to 10 years uh, hold uh, for us. I agree. I agree, Pat. Um, so I'm going to give you the last word here. Uh, and, you know, we have uh, your investors, we have your biggest customers, we have your biggest ecosystem partners. Actually, it's your biggest ecosystem partners participating uh, uh, in in the show as well. Any final last words? Any words of wisdom you'd like to share uh, with them? Well, you know, I'll say that it's an incredible time to be in the semiconductor business. Um, you know, I feel um, extremely fortunate and humbled that all of our uh, technology is, you know, powering some of these, uh, you know, incredibly important applications. And what I would say, you know, to, um, you know, to your viewers is, look, this is a chance for us to partner and accelerate the pace of innovation. Um, and that, co that really comes when people put um, all of their, you know, sort of technologies and know-how together. And so, you know, that's very much what we're about, is accelerating the pace of innovation in uh, the high-performance computing market. So, you know, look forward to seeing um, folks in person sooner rather than later. Uh, and thanks for having us. Those are great words of wisdom. And I feel, I feel good that they're very consistent, Lisa. I mean, as long as we've known each other, you've been very consistent on AMD, what AMD wants to be and what AMD wants to do and how it's going to do it. And, and I appreciate that. And I think your, your customers, your ecosystem partners uh, appreciate that uh, as well. And I'm, I'm excited. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm a technology optimist. And, and I really believe that the technology uh, can help us solve our hardest problems that are out there. And we need more high performance computing uh, to get there. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Pat. Yeah, so Lisa, thank you so much uh, for being uh, part of the show. And you're gonna, you made it so much uh, better. Thanks. So this is Pat Moorhead with More Insights and Strategy, uh, signing off from the 6.5 Summit 2021 with AMD CEO Lisa Sue.